Small signal analysis is a topic that many electronics engineers struggle with long into their student years. Nevertheless, this very helpful technique allows us to easily characterize nonlinear behavior of electronic components. If we think of different characteristics of transistors, for example, it quickly becomes clear that they are all nonlinear. To make our lives easier, we can use equivalent circuits using linear components to describe their behavior around a certain point in their characteristic. This linear model is called small signal equivalent circuit and is only valid for a small deviation around the operating point and thus only for AC signals. In this video we want to explain how to derive such a small signal equivalent circuit for transistor circuits and to determine circuit parameters such as the gain, input and output resistances. In electronics, we generally try to avoid nonlinear calculations because they are tiresome and time consuming. Since our transistors have a nonlinear behavior, we quickly run into problems when we want to calculate the behavior of larger transistor circuits. Therefore, we use small signal equivalent circuits to describe the behavior of the transistor for small deviations around its operating point. There also exist large signal equivalent circuits which are used to define the static operating point. This small signal equivalent circuit is simply a linearization around the operating point. This leads to a circuit that only consists of linear components which makes the calculation way easier. To derive the small signal equivalent circuit of a transistor circuit, we have to know the equivalent representation of each component. To understand where these representations come from, we first have to talk about every component we use in a circuit and focus on its behavior for small deviations around the operating point. To indicate a small deviations of a variable, we will either use the lowercase letter d before the uppercase letter of the variable or we only use the lowercase letter of the variable itself. Let's start with a simple voltage source. An ideal voltage source should provide a constant voltage independent of the flowing current. Thus, a variation of the current I should not change the voltage V. To derive the inner resistance of the voltage source, we consider Ohm's law. For a small change in current, the change of the voltage is nearly zero volt. Consequently, the inner resistance of an ideal voltage source is zero Ohm and its small signal equivalent is a short. An ideal current source works inversely to the ideal voltage source. If there is a change in voltage, the current stays constant. Having a look at Ohm's law and considering that the small signal current change is nearly zero amps, we get an infinitely high inner resistance for an ideal current source, which is represented by an open. Therefore, the small signal equivalent circuit of a constant current source is an open. Again, taking Ohm's law into account, we can draw the characteristic of a resistor. A small change in current leads to a small change in voltage and vice versa. Thus, a resistor just stays a resistor in the small signal equivalent circuit. Its small signal resistance is simply equal to its resistance. As well-informed electronics engineers, we know that the impedance of capacitors is described by the formula Z is 1 over J omega C. So for large values of Z, Z becomes really small. A capacitor with a high capacitance can therefore be seen as a voltage source and can be replaced by a short. We name these capacitors C infinity. However, capacitors with a relatively low capacitance remain unchanged in our small signal equivalent circuit. Inductances behave exactly the opposite way as capacitances. The impedance is described by the formula Z is J omega L. If the inductance has a high inductivity, the impedance becomes high as well. So inductances with a high inductivity will behave like current sources. Thus, these inductances are named L infinity and we replace them by an open. Inductances with a relatively low inductivity again remain unchanged. As you might have guessed, Transistors have more complex equivalent circuits. In this video, we will show you the small signal equivalent circuit for two very common transistor types, bipolar transistors and MOSFETs. 
let's start with the bipolar transistor. To understand the whole equivalent circuit, we need to look at the characteristics of a bipolar transistor. In one of our previous videos, we have already explained where the characteristic curves and the formulas come from. Therefore, we will not discuss this further in this video. The transfer characteristic shows that the collector current and the base current are interdependent. To derive the small signal equivalent circuit, we first have to linearize the characteristic by forming the derivative in the operating point. As a result, we get the linear dependency between the collector current IC and the base current IB. From this we can derive the formula for the small signal current gain beta, which is IC over IB. Since beta is just a linearization of the DC current gain B, and we consider only small deviations around the operating point, we can also write B instead of beta. Since we can control the current IC either via the current IB or the voltage VBE, the first part of the small signal equivalent circuit must be either a current or voltage controlled current source, depending on the parameter that controls our current IC. Now let's have a look at the input characteristic of our bipolar transistor. Since the base emitter junction has to conduct, our operating point lies somewhere here on the line and we linearize around this operating point. A small change in the base emitter voltage causes a small change in the base current. From our previous examples, we can see that this is the behavior of a resistor. Thus, we are modeling the input stage of the transistor with a resistor RBE between base and emitter. RBE can again be calculated by forming the derivative in the operating point. At last, we have a look at the output characteristics of the bipolar transistor. We choose our operating point in the active region. In the active region, we again derive a linear dependency between the collector-emitter voltage and the collector current. As a consequence, the output stage of the transistor can be modeled with the help of a resistor RCE between collector and emitter. Once again, RCE can be calculated via the derivative. Last but not least, we will deduce the small signal equivalent circuit of a MOSFET. Again, we consider the characteristics of a MOSFET. They are quite similar to the characteristics of a bipolar transistor, but with two major differences. The first difference is that the current source can only be voltage controlled and not current controlled. So instead of the current amplification beta, we only use the transconductance Gm. The second difference is that the input stage of a MOSFET has a really high impedance and almost no current is flowing into the gate. As a result, there is an open between gate and source and the small signal equivalent circuit looks like this. The transconductance Gm and the drain source resistance RDS can be again calculated by formulating the derivative. Here is a short overview of the formulas for calculating the quantities of the small signal equivalent circuit of MOSFETs and bipolar transistors. If you like, you can stop the video, take your time to ponder and derive the formulas by yourself by calculating the derivative in the operating point. Now you gain the basic knowledge to derive the small signal equivalent circuit of all transistor circuits. We will look at some examples in one of our next videos. I'm Sabrina with the Institute of Electronics. I hope you have learned something today, but anyways, thanks for watching. For the interested viewer, we highly recommend The Art of Electronics by Horowitz and Hill and for our German-speaking viewers, Elektronische Schaltungstechnik, written by members of our institute.